In the fall of 2022, I was using a Sony FX3, a Sigma 24-70, and a couple of Leica R's for my filmmaking projects. That winter, my wife and I moved states and started new jobs, which made me realize I probably needed to consolidate my filmmaking gear. I needed to be able to drop into a live production environment if I needed to, which means having SDI and HDMI for wireless transmitters, but also XLRs and internal NDs for documentary jobs, but also beefy codecs and good enough image quality to make it all worth it. I also was throwing around the idea of starting a YouTube channel, so things like autofocus seemed valuable to me for the first time. If picking a camera is looking at the intersection of features and image quality and then gating the outcome by price, you'll hardly ever find a perfect match. But the cameras that are nearby sometimes will work perfectly as long as you learn how to use them. And for me, I was stuck between a Canon C200 and an Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K. The Ursa didn't have a fully articulating monitor, which I would need for shooting my own dumb face all the time for this channel. On the other side, the C200 has a whole bunch of annoying Canon issues. I went back and forth until I found a really nice deal on a C200 and I committed to it, and it's the camera I've been using ever since. It's both really impressive, incredibly frustrating, and if you ask me, one of the best cameras to buy used right now. I say we get all the bad stuff out of the way first. Picking the right camera has everything to do with finding ways to work around their shortcomings, so let's start with the most annoying thing about the Canon C200, which is its codec selection. When this camera was announced, there was a lot of hype around its inclusion of Cinema Raw Light recording internally to CFast, which was a really, really big deal. The 12-bit raw footage coming out of the C200 looks great, but it comes at the cost of huge file sizes. You're looking at 1 gigabits per second, which gets you around 15 minutes on a 128 gigabyte card. For long form work, when you don't need maximum beefiness, you would hope you could step down from 12-bit to 10-bit, but for some reason, Canon only included 12 and 8, which is mind-boggling. I don't know why they didn't include all three. If the C200 had 10-bit, chances are I'd be using it full-time, but instead, we're forced to choose between the huge file sizes or the less impressive 8-bit. Another issue is how the log curves are integrated. It's not uncommon for Canon to kneecap their cameras at C-Log3, which unfortunately is the case here. They claim 15 total stops of dynamic range, but the only way to get it is to record in RAW and change the log curve in post from C-Log3 to C-Log2, which buys you around two extra stops. That means that there's no way to monitor C-Log2 while you're recording, which is very frustrating. What I usually do is just pretend that I have C-Log3 and then in post I get a couple extra stops as a bonus present. I can't argue with Canon's 15 stops of DR technically, but to my unreliable eye that does seem a bit optimistic, at least usable stops. The C200 has a very noisy sensor, which I fully expected to some degree. If you're working in RAW, a lot of times you're going to be denoising at least a little bit because there's no internal processing happening on the camera's end, but even beyond that, this camera is noisy. Canon doesn't even recommend shooting at the C200's native ISO of 800 to avoid some of it. I regularly see more noise than I was hoping for in well-exposed skin tones, which is very easily fixed, but it's interesting nevertheless. Also on the topic of skin tones, we're getting Canon color science with the C200, so if you're a fan, then you're in good hands. Greens tend to fall farther away from yellow and closer to blue, which I like. Blues tend to fall towards cyan and farther away from purple, which I like. Skin tones are the hardest to nail down. At least on my C200, skin tones only look particularly natural when overexposed by at least a stop. Underexposed, they look kind of ruddy, and in most cases are far too purple and red. I have to go in and spend time with my hue curves and color warper to fix basically every single shot, which isn't a big deal at all. When I bought the C200, I was told by many that Canon Color Science was going to change my life, and I can't say that it has. I think there's too many variables at play to claim a manufacturer is king in color. Lenses, exposure, lighting, and personal preference all have a seat at the table, and honestly, you should probably spend the time learning how to use footage from every single manufacturer in your color grading suite. All of them have weird quirks, and you can make all of them look fantastic with effort. Canon C200 is no different. If you put the time in, if you put the effort in, the footage looks amazing, but it's not magic if you don't. CineD reports rolling shutter scores to land around 15 milliseconds, which is totally fine in a vast majority of cases. I've seen skewing before in 60fps footage, but I wouldn't worry about it at all. Another thing that does bug me is the build quality. It's a typical Canon plastic build, which means it's probably reasonably tough, but also feels kind of cheap. With everything fully tightened down, the camera still rattles and creaks. The monitor mount is finicky and has to be retightened all the time, and the shotgun mic mount is also pretty cheap feeling. I think it's reliable enough, but sitting next to something like an Ursa, the C200 does feel a little bit like a toy. I think that's all I have to complain about, let's move on to the cool stuff. I know I just sounded pretty critical about the image quality of the C200, but it can be pretty impressive. We all turn our noses up at 8-bit, but this could be the best 8-bit footage I've ever seen. 
It's detailed, but not too detailed. It's reasonably lightweight and records to SD cards, which is nice. The raw footage looks even better with more detail, finer noise, and more dynamic range. There's several ways to overcome the giant file size issue. I've seen some install SSD mounts, some people buy tons of CFast cards and cycle through them throughout the day. I decided to pony up and buy the granddaddy of all CFast cards for simplicity's sake, and now I get a few hours of raw recording at a time. I was also critical of the build quality, but the ergonomics of the C200 are so good. I usually run the monitor on the top of the camera and put the back against my chest, which is super comfortable. My hand is always on the side handle so I can access the joystick, record, ISO, and focus punch in at all times, which thankfully Canon does let you use while recording in the cinema line. I also really like the top handle, and while it can be finicky, the monitor is really flexible and useful. Also, the internal NDs are so nice, which are included in 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10 stop reductions. If I need to record audio internally, there's tons of options and physical controls. There's two full-size XLR in the back of the camera, along with a scratch mic and a 3.5mm in. The other I.O. selection is great too. Dual SD card slots, a single CFast 2.0 for raw recording, 4-pin Limo for power, LANC and LAN, headphone in, SDI out, and what do you know, Canon does know how to use full-size HDMI. Inside the menu, there's also all kinds of fun stuff to play with. If you just go through each of these pages, you got shockless white balance, there's auto white balance if you want to use that. There's a teleconverter, which is basically a crop mode. There is a ton of different audio options within the menu. You can adjust your monitor. You got several different kinds of peaking. There are zebras, waveforms, and of course you can come in here and customize all the buttons and dials, which is one of the strong suits of a cinema camera like this. There's so many options within the menu, but also so many physical buttons on the outside. There really is a lot to love here. The battery life is also great. You get to use Canon BPA batteries here, which are tiny and have tons of juice. My BPA 30s last a couple of hours a piece, and I usually only bring three of them to a shoot day. You can also use dual pixel autofocus with full touch control. I've heard this works great for some, but I don't have a Canon lens to test it on. In my experience, it works about 90% of the time on my Sigma 18-35. So if picking the right camera is really about finding the features that you need, passing the threshold of what you consider good image quality, and making sure that it's within your budget, the C200 is really one of the only options available right now for me. I can drop into broadcast and production scenarios super easily, I have internal NDs, great battery life, great image quality, all for less than $2,000 used. Your situation might look a little bit different, but what all of us have in common is the endless pursuit of finding the shortcomings of our cameras and doing our best to overcome or improve on them. The perfect camera might not exist out there, but you can get pretty close with some creativity. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.